Well, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, nice to have you join us again for this IWA uh, Water Loss Specialist Group uh, session. We, we started these sessions back at the beginning of 2020 when we thought that uh, perhaps some of you didn't have too much uh, to do with the COVID restrictions and travel. And here we are in 2021, already in March, and we're still doing them. And many of us are still uh, under these restrictions. So strange times we're in, but thank you for joining us. And uh, we had a great presentation today. We're going to be talking about the new AWWA uh, free water audit software. Uh, Will Jernigan is going to take us through some of the updates on that software, uh, which is being used throughout North America right now. And then we have also have Paul Merckx, who's going to talk to us about an international uh, implementation of the same software uh, in the Netherlands. So uh, I'm going to let Will and, and Cor introduce themselves as they start. And uh, I think we're ready to go, guys. So if you would like to take it away, Will, thank you very much. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Julian. And thanks to everybody for joining us from wherever you are logging in today. We're going to be taking a look at the new free water audit software. It's called version six. Uh, so we'll consider that taking V6 for a spin. Uh, excited to share it with you. And uh, thanks to Core Merckx uh, for joining me today to share a little bit of um, his experiences in taking that software and applying it to uh, some systems in the Netherlands. So you'll hear about that later. I'm going to carry us through what uh, what what the software is. Uh, I'm I'm assuming that maybe some of you are familiar with the the software itself. Uh, maybe not the newest version intimately, but just generally the the most recent version prior to that. Uh, or maybe you don't have any experience with this at all, and you're learning about the free water audit software for the first time. So I'll try to speak to uh, an audience of that range uh, as we go through. We certainly will be talking about some of the things that are uh, involved in the development of the software. And uh, in doing so, we'll talk about what's new and you'll hear me compare to version six to version five, which, uh, which is the one that's been out for a number of years uh, and was recently replaced uh, in December of 2020 when this newest version came out. Core Merckx is going to share some application of the new uh, free water audit software or FWAS, uh, FWAS. You may hear me refer to that uh, from time to time. But before we uh, before we jump into a specific look at the software, let's let's make sure we have an understanding of how how we got to this point in the journey, because the timeline and, and I'm obviously speaking from a North American perspective, uh, but it really is uh, has has connectivity to what's happening around the globe. Uh, namely, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the, uh, the North American um, utilities adopted the international water balance and the methodologies that kind of go with that of getting standardized way in which we uh, conduct the top-down water audit and develop a water balance each year, use that information to, to develop performance indicators to know how we do and, and what do we need to work on and where do we prioritize, what's it costing us. All of those are key questions. Well, that really precipitated the initial development of a nationally available, or I should say North American available, uh, freely available software uh, put out by the American Water Works Association, so AWWA. First version out in 06, uh, most recent version out in 20. So you can see it's got a journey there of getting all the way to version six. And I'll hit a couple highlights. Um, I'm, I'm gonna spend my focus of today's discussion on version six, but it's helpful to know how, how we got there because there are some developments in version six that are the, the result of almost 20 years worth of industry use and feedback uh, on this tool that have been important. Early on, um, it did not have a function that uh, we refer to as data grading. Uh, it was really just a, a measurement of uh, water in and, and water consumed and developing a water balance. But in the year 2010, introduced this concept of a data grading matrix and that's really something that sets this particular tool apart uh, is, is there is a quantitative assessment of data reliability uh, that goes with the other numbers so in addition to volumes and values that are outputs of the audit how much and how much it's worth there's also validity which is how uh, you know how, how uh, reliable is this number that i'm looking at and that really has informed a lot of the developments uh, that have the major developments that have gone into version six. A couple, uh, couple highlights. In the mid 2000s, when the version one came out, we got a, a whopping 200 downloads, which at the time we thought was 
pretty, pretty dang special. We, we were pretty proud of that. And of course, now looking back, that seems, seems measly. Uh, but you can fast forward the, the version five, the one that just got replaced, it was out for about five years from 2014 to about six years from 2014 to 2020. And it had about 13,000 downloads. In just two months since this uh, most recent version came out, we've already had over 1,000 downloads. And that, that curve shows you that in North America and even other parts of the world, like you'll hear CORE talk about and of this, this tool and the adoption of the practices that this tool embodies is really um, going mainstream. And that's a pretty exciting notion to me. Uh, we're at a very different place in the industry than we were 10, 15 years ago, even five years ago. Uh, it's pretty exciting. So the last five years have, have been, I would say, the culmination of, of version six. Uh, we really started working on it as soon as version five went out five or six years ago, started getting feedback from, from regular users. A couple of years ago, we, we started forming a more concerted effort to develop, and we formed some alpha, beta, and gamma test groups that were informing um, myself and a handful of other folks on the development team to uh, what, what are the things that we want to do. We had, a, we had a pretty long wish list and we really needed to make sure we, we had a lot of different stakeholder engagement, utilities that we're going to be using it, consultants that we're going to be using it, uh, regulatory agencies that, that are in states or jurisdictions that require the submittal of the tool. We really wanted to get a lot of feedback uh, and we did. We got over a thousand comments. Ultimately, that all culminated in the release of version six uh, on, and if you don't have your calendar marked for this, you need to do so, World Water Loss Day, which is the 4th of December uh, every year. And so we, uh, we coincided our release of version six with that, and that helped to co-promote uh, the two events, uh, which, was, which was pretty cool. Before we dive into what's involved in the new software, I want to set the stage for what were our guiding principles that we used to develop the software. And first, first I'll share is that we needed a tool. Uh, and again, think about that adoption curve all the way from 200 downloads 15 years ago to over 13,000 downloads on the most recent version. So we have a lot of different users that are using this now, way more than, than we early on had. So we need to be able to accommodate a wide range of water system setups and user knowledge. Uh, we need to expect that people picking this up are going to be either veterans and experts or this is their first time picking it up. And so it really needs to work for, for all those situations. We also have a lot of different um, scenarios in the supply setup and um, accommodation of uh, English units, metric units. Uh, I'll, I'll show a couple of examples of those, uh, those different pieces and parts as we go through. The next set of uh, grounding principles was, and, and this is fun, we have, we want to make it technically detailed and rigorous. We also want to make it really simple and not much of a, a burden on the user to use. So you can imagine now that we've got some competing objectives uh, and, and that's okay. I mean, that's, that's what good design is about, is about trying to satisfy multiple objectives uh, in more of an optimized or a balanced way. But I share that with you because when, when you get into the tool and you use it, you may see things and wonder, why was it done that way? Why was this included? Why wasn't that included? Those types of things. And the answer is, uh, this is, ends up being a whole, whole multitude of decisions of which one is going to serve the most of these objectives for the most users. And in the end, the data grading component or the data validity component uh, was a big deal. That, that's actually where most of the improvements have occurred. And I'll share this with you in our demonstration. Yep, you're good. All right. We are recording. So, okay, we'll let you, you, let you carry on, Will. Thank you. So there you go. So uh, that was a nice example of the types of bugs that you run into in the real world. And those are also the kind of bugs we wanted to make sure we avoided in developing this software. So uh, li living, living our own uh, on advice here. So the worksheet for version six is set up largely the same as for version five. And that's the reason for that is that the principles behind the tool remain the same. A water balance is what it is. It, it doesn't change in between versions. And the principles of the first principles of water in has to balance against supply, uh, the supply in has to balance against what's consumed and some types of loss. Uh, that's true no matter what. So that the flow of this is, is set up. I'm going to highlight a couple of more nuanced differences and updates and streamline points uh, in the worksheet. So the first one is on. Performing any sort of error adjustment 
to our supply volumes. Uh, that's still there, but there is now a more clear and defined way in which we, we designate if it's uh, over registration or under. Uh, prior form had that entered as a negative or positive value. So now that's a drop down menu uh, that says over or under. It just helps to avoid the opportunity to miss key or to maybe you know, make a mistake on, on over and under. You can imagine uh, what, what that would result in if you did make a mistake there. You're actually introducing new error into your water balance. Uh, and so that's not good. We wouldn't want to do that. So that's a, that's a feature there that, uh, that is new in version six. Uh, the next one I'd highlight is that version six still, uh, version six still has three entries in, in the worksheet that, are, that have a default option. And that is the uh, unbuilt, unmetered, uh, typically your fire department or your municipal flushing or your, your utility flushing, those types of uses. Uh, systematic data handling error related to the meter and meter data and billing data handling. And then of course, theft and authorized, unauthorized consumption. Those are all three still optional defaults. So you don't have to use the defaults, but they're set up to, to provide a starting number if you don't have another number to go off of. And then you can set your goal to track those volumes and develop custom estimates in future water audits. So that's there uh, and that's, that's still a built-in feature. The down at the bottom of the worksheet, the total annual operating cost is, uh, it has been removed as a required input and it's now an optional input. Uh, and the main reason that it was removed is because the only performance indicator that that was used for uh, was a percentage-based performance indicator, the non-revenue water as a percent of operating cost. Uh, and now with uh, the Water Loss Committee's research and research by others at IWA, uh, we're moving away from percentage-based indicators. Uh, they're, they're deemed uh, not, not the best per performance metrics to uh, help us understand what's going on in the system. So because that's not being used in a KPI, it's no longer required. Uh, for anyone interested in continuing to track it, maybe you've got multiple years and you still wanna have that number for, for other reasons or for reference, you can have it there, but it doesn't require a data grade and it doesn't require to be completed for the water audit results to populate. So that's exciting and uh, that's been a pretty popular change. It's one, one less number to go track down when you're, when you're putting together your water audit. At the bottom of the worksheet, I'll, I'll tip my hat to this and then we'll come back to it later. And uh, at the bottom of the worksheet, there's a spot to key in targets if you have developed those targets. And those will then show up on the dashboard uh, relative to what your actual measured values are. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that a bit more when we look at the dashboard. So I wanna take a, a minute or two and talk in more detail about the data grading updates. And this is version five. And, and again, if you're not familiar with this tool, um, apologies. So you'll, you may have to do a little more homework and familiarity, but in version five, you basically uh, had, a, had a box to hover and you got a series of text criteria that pop up and you, as a user or as a water auditor, you had to then look at that and say, okay, which of these conditions do I meet? Which of these conditions do I not meet? And then determine, select a data grade and all that, all that logic and that algorithm occurred in your head. What's different now is that instead of doing it all in your head, there is a function instead of hovering, we now click a G and it takes us to a data validity grading uh, tab that's right beside the worksheet. And it has a navigation bar at the top that has corresponds with all of the inputs on the worksheet. And for those that are uh, acronym phobic, there is a uh, reminder on what the acronyms mean. It's really just shorthand for all of the different inputs on the water audit uh, worksheet. And the way it works is that you essentially uh, click on a button to get to a particular input. You answer all of the visible questions and you choose the best fit answer from already provided answers. So it's a drop down menu. You don't have to come up with an answer. You just simply look at what's there and choose the best answer that fits your situation. And once you do that, all of the, the, the data grade will automatically populate. It also identifies which of the criteria are the limiting criteria. Uh, and this will make a little more sense when I, when I show you the example here. So here is uh, an example of volume from own sources. And our first, you know, the top, the first in input in the worksheet. So I've, I've worked my way down. I've answered questions about data practices. And again, these are these are all questions that were largely there in version five. They're now just presented in a different way to where you're not having to do all of this in your head. Um, but it asks about how much is metered, 
What are we doing re relative to maintenance practices on those meters, annual calibration, annual in-situ flow testing, uh, different things like that. And so here we can see I've made my way uh, down most of them. I've got a few more to go. I click the drop down and I, I'm essentially selecting the best fit answer for the question for my situation. And once I do that and I've completed the every visible question, the data grade automatically populates. Uh, so a couple things that happen here. One is that like ver, ver, uh, as compared to version five, I don't have to think about am I a six, a seven or an eight. I simply have to answer the questions relative to the practices. And then the algorithm does the hard work of choosing what grade then would apply. It also flags the limiting condition and that can be very helpful for forward looking improvements. And so this becomes now not just an assessment tool, but also a planning tool. If I want to identify what, what I can do next to improve reliability in this particular data input, I could go here, click the drop down menu and look at what the next answer options are down and, and kind of map out my, uh, my course for improvement. So that's, that's pretty exciting, removing subjectivity and bringing granularity to what my next steps should be. Quick tip on the navigation bar up top. Uh, once all the buttons, uh, a couple of those, see how we have some that are white. When they're white, that's a clue or that's a signal to you as a user that you still have some questions to answer. But once you've gone through that process and answered all the visible questions for any of, the, any of those that are signaling white and everything is uh, turned orange uh, or clear, clear means it's not applicable for your, for your audit uh, based on what you've keyed into the worksheet, then you're good to go. You, you don't have any more questions to answer. So populating all the inputs, answering all the questions ultimately gets you to uh, completing. And now, now we'll take a look at a couple of the other features uh, in version six. Uh, this is something that was by popular demand. Uh, a lot of folks were interested in having a worksheet where they could do some of their own math, uh, perhaps summing up your consumption volumes, maybe doing some weighted average calculations on your supply error or your customer meter error, uh, whatever you want. It, this is really at, at, your, at your disposal for however you wanna see fit. And you can even link uh, certain results back into the worksheet uh, if you so see, see fit. So the, the other big piece I'll focus on that's uh, an improvement and a, and a major update in the tool is the, the dashboard. And here's a look at what the dashboard looked like on the older version. And it was really numeric results for certain and uh, uh, small apologies for the English units. I do have some in metric units we're going to get to here in just a second. But uh, it really just gave, gave sort of those older KPIs. You can see the percentage ones are in there. Uh, I've already mentioned that those are now out. So those are not included in version six and not recommended um, for, uh, for use any, anymore. It also had some graphical display of volumes versus values or, or costs, uh, the different non-revenue water components. So all of that really carries forward. Uh, and here is what the new and improved dashboard looks like. It, it kind of brings it all together and uh, there's a lot to unpack here. So I'm gonna take, take them a section at a time. The first piece that is, is a, a matter of focus is the data validity. And earlier I mentioned the three Vs, there's volumes and values that are uh, coming out of your audit that help you understand how much are you losing and what's it costing you. But the, the biggest of the Vs is, is validity. And so that's why this is featured on the dashboard is we need to understand if my data validity score uh, out of 100 is falling at 57, that helps me understand that I'm in the third of five tiers. And there is a function of called loss control planning that helps me get oriented. What does that mean? It, it really sets the stage for where should my next steps be focused? Uh, and, and also helps to ask the question, is it even too soon to rely on the volumes and values that are showing in this audit? Uh, it might be premature. And, and so for those of you who go through this process, uh, let's say, for example, your, your, your score comes out to less than 50 and you might be in a tier two, you can see that it's premature to do anything respective to target setting. You really need to get a handle on your data reliability first uh, before, before, uh, before engaging in those types of activities. And you can see similar type of guidance on collecting data, short-term planning, long-term planning, uh, benchmarking and comparing against uh, against others. So that's that's really the that's the context for this data validity gauge or the speedometer, uh, if you will. So that's that's the first thing we look at. The next thing on the dashboard are the non-revenue order components. And so this is going to be very utility specific. Uh, the fact that 
this system has uh, about 250 megaliters per year in, in NRW. That's very system specific. It's not a normalized uh, or a levelized indicator at all. But it is important to know, uh, and this, this volumes versus values is now side by side to help, help tell the story in a, in a bit fuller picture. Here we can see something that, that's pretty common where, for example, the leakage or the real total real losses is certainly by far the largest volume component, but it's not necessarily uh, proportionally the largest uh, value component. In this case, it's still the most expensive thing uh, that we've got going on, but in some cases, uh, metering inaccuracies, which equate to loss of revenue, uh, sometimes they can be more expensive, even, even if the volume is, is a lot less. So volumes and value side by side help to make sure that you're, you've got your priorities straight and you're understanding what is the thing that's costing me the most. And when I'm, when I'm laying out a plan, two-year plan, five-year plan, uh, where am I going to focus my efforts first uh, and what sort of sequence in order? So that, that's important. Again, this is uh, the second major piece on the dashboard. And the final uh, major piece on the, dash, the dashboard is uh, what we affectionately call the fighter jet display. Uh, and now we have a lot of dials. So a, lot, a bit to unpack here, but these are the eight key performance indicators that came out of uh, some research work that has been led by the AWWA Water Loss Control Committee, looking at um, those indicators that, that are the most impactful and the most meaningful. So right off the bat, you see that the percentage-based indicators did not make the cut. Uh, and we're really focused on volume, volumetric indicators in blue and cost indicators in green and helping to understand the measured value, which is in black, the black dial, if you will, or the peg, I rather I should say. The peg indicates what the measured value here. In this particular case, uh, liters per connection per day, we're a little north of 200. And that's charted against uh, North American validated benchmarks. And the benchmarks are coming from those jurisdictions where uh, water audits are being collected and there is some level of validation that's required for those water audits that are turned in. And this really just is meant to give a lay of the land. Uh, if we have a measured value for this year of, of around 200 liters per connection per day, where does that fall relative to other systems in North America? Uh, and the 10th to the 90th percentile uh, established the, the low to high on the, on the gauge chart. And so that's done for, uh, for these, these eight particular indicators. We won't dive any further into the specific KPIs today, but I will mention that in the software, there are references to that research project that I mentioned, as well as a couple other uh, research projects and projects that have produced reports and reference materials that if you really want to learn more about what's, uh, what's behind the scenes there, uh, you can follow the references that are included in the acknowledgement section of the, uh, of the software. The free water audit software. It also has a little bit of a high level guide as to which, you know, which suitable purposes are there for each of the different KPIs and uses and limitations and who would be the principal user. So just to get you oriented, uh, you got a lot going on here in the fighter jet dashboard. Um, the last thing I'll mention about the KPIs is just, just a reminder that there is never one metric that tells the whole story of how efficiently your system is performing. And the, uh, the analogy is, is with your health and you go to the doctor, there's, there's never one measurement that is taken to tell you if you are healthy or not. It is a combination of measurements that, that paints a picture. And that's really kind of what's going on here because you, have, you need to understand volumetrically what's going on in your system, but also from a cost perspective, uh, because when it gets to target setting, that's a very system specific endeavor. Uh, your targets are dictated by your physics and your, your costs. And so it's, it's really important to understand how they all fit together. Uh, speaking of targets, the dashboard I mentioned has the, the ability to display targets. So this is up top right is our excerpt from back from the worksheet. And if you have developed targets for these particular volumetric indicators, then you can key those in and they'll display in a uh, dash blue line, just so you can see, okay, we're here, we're at, we're at you know, 200 or so liters per connection. The goal that we have developed or the target that we have developed is, uh, is here, and so we've got a ways to go. And it helps you track your progress towards your goal. So with that, uh, summarizing 
couple a uh, couple points before I ask my colleague to share some of his experiences using this exciting new tool. The interactive data grading is a major improvement, uh, and it really is stepping forward and getting away from sort of subjectively picking a grade to really just answering a series of practices, which also captures and timestamps and makes it you can do a printout of, of what all those answers are pretty easily from the tool. It helps to, to do that timestamp. It also helps to flag what are the limiting criteria. So that's a pretty big, pretty big step forward in my opinion. I'm very excited about that feature. The fighter jet dashboard is another uh, major, uh, major improvement and helps to feature information that is action oriented and helps to help folks to really make decisions. Because if you do a water audit and then you stop there, you're, you're not going to save any water. So you have to actually follow on and you want to you make sure you're engaging in the right next steps and uh, investing in the right things. Uh, acknowledgements and thanks to the, fo the other folks that were in the development group and a few folks that, are, uh, that were part of our uh, alpha testing group and then several other folks that were in the larger, uh, larger industry beta and gamma testing groups. Too many to name on this slide, but uh, a few, few folks to acknowledge and say thank you to. A lot of, lot of stakeholder input for sure. Here is the link for the uh, free water audit software. And um, I'll, uh, I'll also throw this in the chat uh, core while you're, you're giving your presentation, but uh, this is where you can go to download it. And uh, again, mark your calendars every year for the 4th of December. So I think we're gonna hold and do Q and A uh, once uh, Core has, has given his piece. So Core, I'm excited to turn it over to you. I'll ask you to introduce yourself and share a little bit of your experience using the free water audit software. Thank, thank you, Will. And, and, and the software is indeed an amazing tool. Uh, my name is Cor Merks. I'm from the Netherlands. I speak Dutch normally. Um, I'm introduced in the industry by, uh, by Alan in, in 2014. Uh, so I'm very happy that Alan and, and also Kate was there. Um, I started using uh, Alan, his software uh, for making uh, the water audits. And then specifically for the Netherlands situation, water utilities are large. Uh, the smallest has uh, 250,000 connections and Vitens, the company I'm working with now at the moment has two and a half million connections, um, 5 million 400 uh, customers, clients. So more or less, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, an industry where uh, each of the subject matter experts has understanding, full understanding on one or two or perhaps three inputs to the water audit. So when, when learning about the, uh, the free water order software version five in, uh, in Atlanta during the first North American water loss uh, conference, I became excited because it facilitates working in a workshop with a group of people that independently from each other bring in their input and then discuss the data grading, the data validity. So the, the strength for me and, and the reason that I became very enthusiastic uh, from start on was related to the modus that, that you can do a water audit together, announce that you are organizing the workshop, people are going to uh, find out their, uh, their inputs, give them four to six weeks of, uh, of time <clears throat> and then sit together and do it together and do also the data grading together. So we have crossed the ocean now. So we are from uh, the Americas uh, to, to Europe. And then within Europe, the Netherlands is really a small country, small size, but still 18 million people. Um, and then the map on the right is uh, indicating uh, the country. We have a little bit more detail. We have the 10 Dutch water utilities with uh, Vitens uh, being uh, the largest one, both in, surf, uh, in sur uh, area and in uh, connections and in uh, uh, customers served. Next, next one, uh, please. So this is the situation for, uh, for Vitens, which is the largest utility in the Netherlands. And then uh, on, on you see that, that the, uh, the uh, I-axis starts at 290 and finishes at uh, 400. And that's in million cubes a year. So the advantage of the free water order software is that it has the megaliters uh, uh, opportunity. So it works in, in Europe also. Um, can you put on the, the next slide, uh, Will? 
So this is now starting at, uh, at zero. Uh, and then you see the difference between water supplied, revenue water and non-revenue water, where you see that over a period of uh, six years, it's quite stable where the, um, the supply and thereby also the water resources are increasing. And that's the limiting factor at the moment in the Netherlands. There is a lack of fresh groundwater resources. So the drivers to continue to invest in water loss control are always water quality. If pipes don't leak, there's also no risk of water entering in your uh, distribution system. It's asset management excellence uh, because it's an indicator, pipe burst and leakage is an indicator for the need for pipe replacement, timely pipe, uh, pipe replacement. So it's the basis for investment planning. And once again, sustainability and the regional lack of fresh groundwater resources are at the moment driving continuing investments. So this is Vitens. At this moment, we have one KPI, non-revenue water as a percentage for the whole Vitens area. That's the starting point in, uh, in October uh, 2020 when I was um, introduced as an external consultant in, uh, in Vitens working with a very dedicated um, team to, uh, to improve the, uh, the situation on non-revenue water. If you can put on the second. And, and this is where all of a sudden the large numbers come in because Vitens has already um, uh, divided their total water supply area in, uh, in 10 or 11 clusters. That's the, uh, the figure on the, uh, the picture on the left hand side. In the middle, you see that the same clusters are already divided in what they call, what we call water balance areas. And they are even subdivided in water balance zones. So in the end, during this year, and I had hoped to have results already during this presentation, but that's, that's due to data availability, not possible. In the end, I have to develop 280 water balances, one for Vitens, 10 for clusters, 80 for the water balance areas, and then 189 for the water balance zones. So that's, that's the challenge uh, currently at the moment. Next slide, please. So, um, and what, what, what is driving this initiative? Now, if you are at a leakage level, and, and sorry, Alan, I know that I'm one of the professionals against percentage, but it is still being used in the Netherlands at the moment. Uh, percentage is uh, slightly above 6% at the moment. And the ambition is in, in terms of sustainability, each water drop sustainable in 2030 is to drive it down to below 5%. So it increases the focus on non-revenue water reduction. And coming from 25% and going to 15% is perhaps costing much more, but easier than driving leakage down from 6% to 5% in the knowledge that water meter inaccuracies in the Netherlands at the moment are 2%. So one third of non-revenue water is already explained by the under registration of the water meters. So what we are going to do and improve is to develop a, 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 a meaningful set of key performance indicators from mid this year onwards, based on at least a water balance for each of the 80 water balance areas and preferably at the, the more uh, uh, the subdivided uh, level of the water balance zones. And what we are then going to do is to feed information from the water balance zones into the water balance areas, into the clusters, and then at the level of feed ends. So more, more or less, this, this will result in the meaningful performance indicators, non-revenue water by volume, apparent losses indicator, a real losses indicator and the ILI, the infrastructure leakage index. And at this moment, I'm so far that we are working on really defensible documentation. And that's key for uh, developing the, uh, the water balance at, uh, at a high enough accuracy. Why my enthusiasm for the tool? And that's uh, more or less explained in, uh, in these bullet points. It's a spreadsheet based tool. It's fully documented. 
it completely relies and refers to the uh, American Model Works Association uh, Manual uh, 36. At the moment, fourth edition, uh, but there will be an update into a fifth edition in, uh, in, in, in some time. It goes together with a release memorandum uh, developed by, uh, by Will uh, at the moment that the uh, new tool has been uh, uh, released on World Water Loss Day, but also included in the tool already, there's a full page of, uh, of definitions. So it's not, not only the, the thick book, the release memorandum, but also guidance given in the software itself. Then the third bullet point is it, it, it really includes the latest water sector insights. So the, the KPIs in the dashboard are without percentage are the meaningful ones at the moment. And the, and the big advantage of having um, an, an opportunity to compare in the Netherlands or internationally with the 1200 uh, water utilities that are more or less integrated in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the spreadsheet tool already makes it possible to compare with peers and always compare benchmark uh, uh, with your existing current situation in mind. Uh, but the software has this uh, comparison uh, uh, opportunity in it. It facilitates teamwork and transparency. And, and for me, this is the key. It's the interactive uh, data grading. And yes, in the Netherlands, uh, the American Waterworks uh, Manual 36 and also the Manual M33 are not uh, applicable because we have our own standards. But in the industry, the practices are more or less comparable. So. Also, the questions that are asked in the data grading uh, methodology are, can be answered worldwide, can be answered in the Netherlands. And the real specific questions, uh, uh, whether a certain procedure is absolutely in line with uh, American Waterworks uh, Manual M uh, M36. Yeah, that's a difficult to answer. But to be honest, that's not making the difference in the data grading. So the majority of the questions are international questions and can be answered. And another uh, big uh, advantage of this tool is that it uh, facilitates the proper documentation. It's not necessary to make a different report. You can always do, of course, but basic information can be put in a start page. We are documenting in the interactive data grading uh, sheet. There are user notes that we can uh, shift to, and there is the blank sheet that uh, that will have shown. And then the, the the functionality in the software is such that from the moment, once again, we do it in a workshop setting. So one of the subject matter experts provides uh, his or her uh, input. We fill that input in the sheet and we can directly go to the notes explaining where the input is coming from from which report or who, which person did provide that input and directly switch to the grading. So more or less we start on top, we finish at the bottom and at Waterbedrijf Groningen, the first water utility uh, I did work for in uh, starting 2017 uh, with the version five, it took uh, more or less a half a day workshop uh, to make uh, two, two water balances. Um, yeah, and, if, and you can imagine that has to speed up if you have to do 280. And that's the reason that we're focusing at the moment in uh, collecting the defensible documentation before sitting in a workshop set, a session for uh, further developing uh, the software. But software has already been distributed within Vitens to a large group of colleagues that will take part in the um, in the, in the workshops. And it is not only the Excel sheet, but also the release memorandum. It's the example of, of Asheville, and it is the example of the, the data grading. So people are already preparing themselves for sitting in the, in the workshop session um, on the uh, four documents that have been uh, provided by American Water Works Association with great help and support and, uh, and uh, by, by, by Will. So it's there, and, and then some characteristics and challenges uh, of uh, applying this, uh, this tool at, uh, at Vitens. Situation in the Netherlands at Vitens is that almost all 
authorized consumption is metered. And that we at the moment have 2% under registration. So all consumption can be precise and, and, and is also precisely allocated in the water balance zone already by postal code or zip code. And that's because we have a very accurate uh, uh, GIS uh, system. And the only exemption of an authorized consumption that isn't metered is the flushing of new installed pipes. And one of the procedures that we are going to launch is that all contractors that do in general install the new pipelines are going to help us filling also the cubic meters related to flushing uh, new uh, new systems. So that's an improvement. And then, to be honest, everything will be metered. And also all water supplied is metered. And there is an opportunity for having the water supplied error adjustment for the volume of own sources. And the procedures for electronic calibration and for in situ flow accuracy testing are also currently being updated because the procedures were slightly different from the American Model Works. And we even used the data grading uh, opportunity, the information and the questions asked there, and also the frequency um, uh, of, of um, that is recommend, recommended to avoid that a certain uh, grading is, uh, is is limiting, as shown by uh, by Will, is taking up, and uh, uh, procedures are once again currently being updated based on the first experience that we have with the uh, with the tool. One strong thing that is really organized in in Vitense is that uh, uh, daily data review is taking place. So if there are anomalies, if there are errors, if there is missing data from a crucial meter pressure or volume, it is uh, observed and notified. And uh, the people that do this data review also know how to make repairs if necessary. And one thing that we can improve on is that not all cross-border supplies are metered. So the water imported and the water exported at the moment at the lowest level of the uh, zoning, the, the water balance zones, is not available. So this is really something we are going to improve in a period of the next one to three years. Uh, once again, focus on non-revenue water is really strengthened due to the uh, new strategy. And that means also that investments for better, better uh, non-revenue water, water audit are possible. So that's, that, that goes together with uh, uh, put the money where your mouth is. Uh, and Fitens is really an example of a utility that takes that responsibility. Um, apparent losses in the Netherlands are predominantly customer metering inaccuracies. So the, the, the uh, system, uh, the, the uh, SDHE, um, the systematic data handling errors are not relevant. So that uh, default value of uh, 0.25% uh, is, um, is, is, is not valid in the Netherlands. And we have the impression but studies are ongoing that also the default value for unauthorized consumption is considered too high. It's already reduced from 0.25% to 0.2% in a discussion with all 10 Dutch utilities, but even for VTENS, that 0.2% is, uh, is too high. What we also are going to do is that we are going to develop the KPI targets to optimize the dashboard so that we really uh, use the, uh, the dashboard um, as it is intended to, to be. And then my closing remark is that that we, and, and we is uh, the Dutch water industry and some Danish utilities are happy with the uh, American Waterworks free water audit software in its uh, latest uh, version uh, six. That's all folks. <laughs> okay, cool. And Will, thank you very much for that uh, update. And also your in very interesting story about the rollout in uh, in the Netherlands, so I'm sure there'll be some questions. Um, let's let's take a look at the uh, at the chat here. In fact, I know there's some questions. I can see here. So, Will or Will and Core, um, Gary would like you to speak a little bit on the changes in defaults in version five. Yeah, yeah, I can hit that. Let me uh, get this one up. I think it's here. 
Uh, thanks for that question, Gary. So uh, I mentioned in my remarks that there are still three entries that have the default options provided. And there are uh, some updates to how those entries are calculated. Uh, I would ca categorize those as minor updates, but we did change the math. So originally this uh, unbilled and unmeters was, was at 1.25% of water supply. We ended up uh, modifying that. Or, by the way, that originally came from, um, from actually from some data from the UK and it was about 20 years ago. And so there was some um, rationale that went into modifying that. The, in the end, it was modified to a 0.25% and not based on water supply, but rather based on build consumption. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about why that change was made, I would point you to that release memo that CORE referenced. It's on the uh, same website as where you can go to download the software. Uh, so we, we go into a bit more detail about that change and some other changes and a little bit of the behind the scenes and some of the technical basis for that. Um, and then the, uh, the other two are uh, still at, at 0.25, but again, derived off of the build volume. So that's, that's a little bit of those defaults. Uh, Core, you mentioned that in the Netherlands that you've made the decision to use a custom value. And I wanna make sure that everybody knows that that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, they're meant to be there to help get folks started, but it's, it's encouraged for you to take a very specific look at your system understand and examine and investigate where these things are happening. Flush volumes, unme other unmetered uses, uh, systematic data handling error, and unauthorized consumption. Uh, ultimately, to, to make, make your own decisions about those things. Uh, but it's set up either or. It's at the auditor's discretion. Uh, default value versus a custom value. Yes, and, and that's exactly uh, because uh, th there are two flushing types for uh, maintaining your, your network. The flushing for uh, keeping your water quality um, uh, uh, as good as possible. That's completely metered. So flushing uh, for, for water quality maintenance is unbuilt metered volume. So that, that has to be reduced from the percentage if we would use the percentage. But in the end, uh, digging into the details of this utility, the only unbuilt, unmetered, uh, like I discussed before, is the uh, flushing done by contractors uh, before uh, uh, starting to use a, a new water system. So we really want to, to use the, uh, the accurate uh, volume that's coming from the, from the contractor. And then the 0.25% would really be uh, too high. Um, so that, that's indeed, um, you use the percentage, the default values as a starting point if you don't have that much experience to start with. But in the end, it's all about uh, figuring out the, uh, the, the volumes that are uh, relevant for, for your utility or in, in, in the case of Vita, my case now, the, the water balance zones at the lowest level of, um, of uh, division of the uh, whole supply area. Hey, thank you, Cor, for that additional information. And, and Will, uh, the next question is uh, to both of you. Uh, well, I guess it's to Will, really, because it's, it's a North American question uh, from Kate Stanton Davis. And she says, hi, how many small North American utilities does the AWA expect will now use FWA S6 now that the lower limit for calculating an ILI has been removed at version six? Will perhaps that's... Yep, yep, happy to hit that. And the lingo, Julian, is the FWAS, uh, the FWAS. So you can, be in, okay. you can be in on the lingo now. I'll, I'll get the FWAS, okay. that's good. I'm learning today. <laughs> so the, uh, thank you, Kate, for the question. Um, the piece that Kate's referring to there is on the infrastructure leakage index. The prior version, version five, had some filters in place to where if a system size uh, and density were below a certain threshold, it would not display, it would calculate, but it would not display the UARL or the ILI. And those were removed uh, in acknowledgement that there's, there's continued research and development on uh, system correction factor. And we wanted to, to maybe to take that filter off and so that there's no size or threshold or density threshold that prevents a utility from seeing it calculate. Uh, and then, then kind of let the industry take it from there. Uh, so that's the context, I think, Kate, for your question. The answer is how many small or how many small systems? I think uh, that's still TBD uh, or to be determined. But my expectation is that 
we're going to see a lot of, uh, continue to see a lot of uh, increase in, in who's adopting it. And most of the systems in North America are small systems. And so I think that it's, it's we're gonna see more. Uh, I would, if I'm being honest, I don't know how many of those small systems necessarily weren't using it before because of that filter that prevented this particular metric from displaying, uh, but it could be. Uh, and there are, you know, there are regulations in certain states that do set a size cutoff and take that into account of which metrics are they looking at and that kind of thing. So my expectation is it's going to continue to rise. We had 13,000 downloads of the last version over a number of years. Uh, we've already had a thousand downloads in just a couple months of this new version. So I'm expecting that it's going to continue to rise for sure. Okay, thanks, Will. The, the next question is from Alison Kwan. And the question is, is there a potential for an API integration into our platform? Are the worksheets, dashboards, open source? Yeah, thank you, Allison. Uh, it's a good question. It is one that we, we get from time to time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it, well, fortunately, it's it's freely available to tool. Unfortunately, it is not open source uh, because it, it lives behind the copyright with uh, the American Water Works Association. So that's, uh, that is, uh, that makes it not, uh, integratable to uh, to a APIs or, or other softwares. What I will share is that, uh, like the last version, um, in a few months we're going to put out um, what what's known as the compiler, which is a simple compilation companion tool for if you have a lot of water audits and you want to aggregate them into a single database, uh, that compiler will do that. Uh, again, in, in the Excel environment uh, using using uh, Visual Basic. So that, that's something that I mentioned is uh, if, if a regulatory agency or a software integrator wants to integrate data from a lot of different audits, uh, the compiler would be an important tool in that process. And that will also be freely available. Hope that answers. Thanks, Will. Uh, the next question is uh, from Cornelius De Jong, and it's the core. And he says, uh, Core, why did you not use the EasyCalc tool developed by Roland Limburg? What are specific advantages for using the WWA tool? Look, look, I already mentioned in my presentation the uh, the software developed by uh, by Alan. Uh, I know that uh, that Roland has the EasyCalc, but my first introduction in the industry uh, was based on uh, on uh, with Alan's software and explanation by Alan. What, what is very um, uh, what is um, making the uh, free water audit software for me specific is that I really can use it in a workshop setting where uh, a large number of the inputs are provided by uh, a variety of uh, uh, staff members. So it's, it's, it's the workshopping approach uh, combined with the uh, that, 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 that is really strong together with the data grading, combined with the fact that uh, you fill out one spreadsheet, uh, switch from notes to grading, uh, back to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the sheet again. So that um, is really, an, uh, an, 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 yeah, uh, there are so many nice features in that, uh, that I, uh, I uh, like and prefer working with this uh, tool. Se se second thing is, um, I, I mentioned that, that in my home country, I speak Dutch. Uh, there are some uh, worldwide, some uh, 23, 24 million people speaking Dutch. So that means that most of the software is, uh, is, in, uh, is in English. And um, the big advantage of uh, this uh, American Waterworks free audit software is the um, large amount of underlying documentation that people can go through. And, and really the, the, the American Waterworks manual M36 really provides a step-by-step -step explanation for each data input in the, in the previous version uh, five. And, and more or less very useful also to support working with this version six. And I'm sure that when the uh, manual M36 is being uh, updated, that uh, the links uh, to uh, the pages and the screens in the uh, version six free water audit uh, software are also uh, repaired again. So it's also the level of documentation. I'll, uh, I'll just add, and actually I'll add and go ahead and hit uh, the question that Bombos had put in for the next one, Julian, because I think it's relevant to this, uh, yeah, no, that, that's that, that the free water audit software was developed um, under the umbrella of, of the American Water Association. So it's, its focus was North American water utilities. 
in doing so, uh, we needed to accommodate a metric unit to have the folks in Canada um, accommodated. And in doing so, that opened up for, well, if, if, if it's in metric, then others outside of North America can use it. It wasn't developed with the intent to compete with or be a replacement of other, other um, water balance softwares that, that are out there. So I would encourage, uh, and, and Bombos, your question is, does it include 95% confidence limits? And the answer is no. Uh, this was sort of a, an American adaptation. This data grading functionality was an American adaptation of uh, a number of years back. We, we made the decision to go that way rather than the 95% confidence limits. And I think both of them are good to do, to be honest. So I would encourage folks to, uh, if, if you're doing this uh, and maybe using using other tools as well, using using two different ones. And if you've got um, the easy calcs or any others that are using a 95% confidence limits approach, I think that's good to uh, combine. Because the data validity score, it's more sort of a general reliability measure, but it doesn't, doesn't give a plus minus. It doesn't give a plus minus on uh, the real losses volume uh, or any particular KPI. Uh, so to that end, I would encourage folks to, uh, to make sure you're, make sure you're using uh, the tools that are out there. Uh, most important things to get started, make sure you're doing something <laughs> for sure. Great, thank you very much, Will. And I think we have one last question within the time allotted and that's from David Andrew Fernandez to everybody. And he says, uh, do we need log data for supply and pressure in the AWWA tool? the same as what we use in the easy calc uh, bottom up water balance. Mm -hmm. So the short answer is you don't have to have log data. Uh, I think it's here. Nope. Uh, I don't have a screenshot of the uh, pressure entry, but on the worksheet, the, um, there it is. So on the worksheet, uh, there's a single entry point. And so again, this is on the, on the, bur the burden on the water auditor to, to look at what pressure data is available. And Alan, I know uh, Alan um, Lambert has done work on getting to average zone points and helping, helping to get some uh, simple methodologies to do that. You know, it's really about do the legwork that you can, get the best data that you can, enter the, ab what's, what's your best understanding of the average operating pressure across the network. But then the data grading function allows you to rate or rank, uh, is that more reliable or le less reliable? So. The short answer is you don't have to have log data, but you would want to be sure to answer the data grading questions accordingly and make sure that if you are logging the data, then it's going to probably give you a more reliable data grade. Uh, and is that representative of your whole network or are you just logging it in certain areas and those types of questions? So uh, good, good question, but uh, it's really set up as a, it's on the auditor to, to do what they can, but then they need to grade it accordingly. Good. Thanks, Will. Uh, everybody's saying here that it was a really enjoyable presentation. I think at this point, we're just off, just a little over the hour and for recording purposes, we should probably think about closing it down. If there's any sort of really burning last question for either Will or Cor uh, or any comment, then, then let's make it. Otherwise, I would suggest that we, uh, we, we shut it down at that. The recording will be available. And uh, we will be uh, posting the places where you can see all of this whole series of IWWA recordings. So everybody will to take a look at that, think about it, come up with other questions. Uh, if anybody would like to make a presentation in the future, please contact us. Um, you can contact uh, uh, Gary. He's probably the best person to contact Gary Wyeth. You can find his email on the IWA uh, website. And uh, I think that we're, we're gonna be looking at uh, a few more weeks or months of, uh, of, of disturbed normal activity. So uh, I wish everybody well and uh, hope that everybody stays safe and hope that we all have vaccinations and re resume our normal activities as soon as possible. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Will and Cor very much for a very interesting presentation. I'd like to thank all of the uh, participants for their questions, all very appropriate. And with that, I think we'll, uh, we'll We'll call it a day. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Julian. Everybody take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.